Hello and welcome on Watches TV and I guess some of you guys remember that a few months back uh, we were kind of the first ones to do an interview of both uh, Jean-Claude Beaver and his son Pierre when they revealed that they were coming up with their very own brand. Well we thought it would be a good idea to do a follow-up on this and see what has been going on since then. So a few days back uh, uh, we met both of them in what will become their own assembly facility just outside of Geneva and nicely overlooking the Geneva Lake. So this will be the first episode of an interesting series where we will regularly check back on the development of the project. But today we will mainly talk about the essence of this endeavor as well as doing a little walkthrough into these empty spaces and discover how they intend to use it. And I must say that I really like that we are able to do so and accompany on our very own way what will most certainly be a successful adventure. I mean, I think we can trust these guys in making it happen. But it doesn't mean it will be an easy journey. So let's go. And I know it's quite long, but we prefer it that way. There's plenty of interesting uh, things that are said. And I like the route that they are taking, coming back to this notion of établisseur, the way watchmaking used to be made. So we met a few months ago, uh, just a few days after you announced uh, this uh, ambitious project of yours. And uh, in the last few months, what has happened then? We are six months from the first time people and ourselves will see our watches. For the moment, we have seen the watches in our brain, in our head. We have seen the watches on the drawing, but we have never seen the real piece. And so we are looking forward uh, to see on the 15th of March, the first six pieces. But I guess you will see a bit more prior to that. I mean, there's a little evolution now. And uh, so what exact stage uh, are they, these pieces uh, currently? Uh, I think we've worked a lot on bringing those pieces to life. Um, so we've, we've started now, um, not, not ourselves, but our partners have started manufacturing and doing the first tests on, uh, on cases bracelets, dial, everything. So everything is in the process of being created. We've uh, defined the product as a whole. It's 100% paper ready. So now it's just a question of putting it in, into the flesh. And it's a good start. Today we're here at our first day in our new offices, uh, which will be an atelier as well, where we'll assemble the, the pieces um, eventually some, at some point. So we're in front of this uh, yet empty building. Indeed. So walk us through it and uh, tell us a little bit how it's going to evolve. So this is an old protected uh, building, which used to be a farm. And the owners decided to keep one part, which is on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this whole part of the building, they wanted to dedicate it to uh, making office spaces. Uh, and this particular space has been uh, watch in, like a space for the watchmaking industry and for the medical industry as well. So that's why you'll see, for instance, this elevator, um, which is specific, specifically designed for wheelchairs. And you'll see a few, there's a bit, bits and bobs here and there that remind us of the medical industry. So you didn't have to do any work, everything was... Uh, I mean, a, a few little things of yeah. maintenance, yeah. but uh, no major uh, works here. All right. So what uh, are we going to have here on this floor? So here we're really in the, the reception. So there'll be a little desk here where you can announce yourselves. Uh, well, you'll be welcomed, hopefully, with a good service. I hope we'll so, too. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> and here will be a bit our client area. Um, we'll have some nice, cozy couches, a few displays, a screen here where we'll be able to project videos or, or other designs and have something to drink, something to eat. This is going to be so kind of... A, a cozy space uh, exactly. for your customers. Exactly. So let's go to the really interesting part straight away, uh -huh. uh, which is my father's office. This is where... I was going to be a bit arrogant and say half the magic happens, mm -hmm. but actually where 90% of, uh, of the magic and the ideas come, come to life will be here. So he'll have his own access, his own chimney. Well, it's quite an inspiring place. I uh, can understand that. Yeah. So I guess the next time we come around, uh, it's going to be full of furniture. And here. He's, exactly. And he's, he's, he's always on the move. He's always standing up, having phone calls, 
he loves to being outside, so that's why I also installed a bench outside for him. And here has easy access, so he can go and wander around in the, in the fields to get more, more inspiration. And coming back on these pieces, could you also maybe repeat what we're talking about? What is the objective? What is the cahier des charges of this, uh, of this piece? What's the philosophy first, if, if you don't mind? <clears throat> it's to master the invisible. This is the first role, it's the reason why we exist. We want to master all the parts that are invisible. This is the first role, it's the reason why we exist. You know, with the industrialization in the mid of the 20th century, the people have concentrated to decorate and to master every path that you can see. But in a watch, when you have 400 parts, when you have uh, 80 screws, there are a lot of things you cannot see. And, that, and in the past, what you could not see has always been mastered as if you would see it. Thanks to the <laughs> industrialization, people have started to think, why should we master, why should we polish this screw? Nobody except the watchmaker will ever see this screw. So why should we spend 100 Swiss francs to polish the screw that nobody can see? And we say no. The invisible must be mastered. That is the fundamental rule that goes through all our collection and that will go for 100 years through our, our brand. The fact of going down that route, has it have, did it have any impact on the actual uh, development of the piece? I mean, in terms of the construction, the architecture that you chose, the fact that everything needs to be indeed well finished, extremely well finished, uh, has this had, again, a constraint on how you did things? It, it, it had in a sense that we always had to ponder the technical aspect of our watches, because obviously it's nice to have beautiful watchmaking and um, before finishing, but it also has to be functional. We have to make a product that works and that is as high of quality as our finishing or our design. Um, so we, we push to the max the technical feasibility of uh, our pieces, always challenging uh, our different partners, constructors, engineers, to tell them, look, uh, we know there are technical constraints, but please push it to the maximum. We have to go as far as we can and where most people haven't been yet. And, 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 and there's another element in our concept is to give birth to the soul of the watch. And you can give birth, in our opinion, uh, 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 to the soul only when every detail is mastered. As long as there are elements that have not been mastered, the soul cannot come out. And when everything is mastered, the soul comes out. And the soul is more important to our eyes, to our vision, than the, to keep time. Because, okay, a watch is done to keep time, but that's not the only reason, and it's not the major reason today. Today, it's the soul of the product that is so relevant. And in addition to the mastery of every component to, to really give it a soul. There's also something that we chose specifically the different partners we're working with at the moment um, for is that we believe also in the in the chain of love in a way. You know, from our partners, the way they treat, they manufacture certain components, certain pieces uh, to us here when we'll be assembling them uh, to the retailer who will be selling them. We believe that in every step of the way, love has to be injected in this product so that it comes out as really a whole that and there's this whole chain of transmission um, which is really important for us so we also chose partners that respect that philosophy so to, to achieve this uh, full coherence uh, you just mentioned uh, the suppliers the partners that are currently working on it but indeed behind us we have a very lovely uh, building that's going to host obviously some employees and they also need to share this same uh, philosophy how do you uh, take uh, to, to, to find uh, these uh, collaborators that will uh, ultimately join you. Thanks to the fact that we are in Switzerland, 
it's a little bit easier to find these people rather than if we would be in Mumbai. Although in Mumbai you have artists in another sector. Here you have artists for the last 400 years. Some families have been in the watchmaking art. It's not that they started this year. You know, family, people, the watchmaking art is in the air. The watchmaking art is everywhere. Naturally, you are right, it's not in Zurich, uh, although I live there, but it's here. It's near Geneva. It's near the mountains called the Jura. It's near Le Brassu. It's near La Chaux-de-Fonds. You have the watchmaking art is in the air. And when, as it is in the air, to recruit people is, has always been difficult, but it's less difficult than if we would live in Mumbai or in Sydney or wherever. Here in this region, especially Geneva and Le Brassu and the, the Jura, we have a culture of making watches. It's yeah, and a the, culture. And the, the type of watchmaking you're going after must be also quite motivating for a few people. Definitely, and also the fact that with, our, with the way we see the philosophy behind our pieces, it also kind of recenters some of the attention to the watchmaker. Um, it's less of a, you know, watchmakers today in, in some situations, they just do, they just finish bridges or they do one spiral or they're really into one field as where we believe in the fact that one watchmaker, one watch. Uh, and he has to really, it's his, he has to be proud of what he accomplished. It's his baby. Just, just as we have to be proud of putting our name on the dial, our watchmakers have to be proud to make those, those watches and they have to put love in, inside these pieces and really, uh, be happy about what they're doing so yeah. so here in this lovely lovely space we'll have our bureau technique um, where our constructors and engineers or designers will come together to develop new little bits and bits and bolts here and there that are going to be quite interesting um, we also incorporated in the bureau technique the designer because we believe that uh, we want watch our watches to where we don't want to design crazy stuff that then is horrible for engineers to come up with. Yeah. So we want them working in synergies to create uh, the mo most organic pieces. Yeah. The way it was back in the days and where... This uh, balance can always be. I mean, sometimes it's complicated. Uh, it's so, very but complicated. It's, but it's obviously very uh, meaningful to have both of them exactly. together. Exactly, to have yeah. something really organic and uh, something very, uh, very strong. So then on the rest of this floor is more of, a, of, a, of some admin uh, with the logistics office. So ultimately, I mean, two identical uh, watches will never be identical. Hopefully, They're hopefully nature. not. Yeah, it, and, it would be it would be tragic and if it was. Thanks to the dial, because most of the pieces we do we produce have a stone dial, and two stone dials are never the same because the stone is not the same. Yeah. So they will be different anyhow. We're going to be very harsh on personalization, uh -huh. customization. We believe, uh, and especially with this role as établisseur, yeah. that if you buy a product, you also buy our vision, our take on watches. Um, we're going to be producing already limited series. Our dials will be stone, so everyone will be a bit different. Every movement will have its little uniqueness uh -huh. due to the, how much ha is handmade. Um, so we're really planning on keeping the personalization and unique pieces and and what else very limited very limited and even in the case where we would do a special unique piece it has to respect our codes mm -hmm. first and foremost yes and technically speaking if i recall correctly you are going for a tourbillon minute repeater carillon yes. micro rotor you have a good memory bravo yes that's it <laughs> and uh, so on the on this development have you encountered any difficulties or surprises i think naturally you could expect that on a watch so complicated we are confronted with challenges all the time um luckily well we're well surrounded and we we've challenged everything and i think we're ready to now start um, the prototyping process and i would say to give an answer if you would have asked the question when what are the difficulties you have encountered? I would say we will be at the end of the difficulties 
once the customer has worn the watch 10 years. Then we can say, wow. <laughs> but till then, you encounter one difficulty more or less after the other one. And talking about uh, customers or the uh, general watchmaking scene, uh, uh, so far, what kind of uh, responses uh, have you had? Uh, so me personally, I've been uh, buried down uh, uh, wor work and, uh, you know, just making everything happen. So we didn't really even get a chance to get much response to the few people, friends and family and uh, extended ec ecosystem it, where it sounds pretty positive. But then again, people just can't wait to see the design, the piece and the, the first prototype. So I think we'll, only able, we'll be only able to uh, measure this response next year. Yes, and the, the, you know, when you start a new project like the one we do, uh, I've been in the watch business for 50 years. The few remarks I had, how come you start again after so many years? And I say, it's very normal that I start again because passion cannot retire. And I could be 80 years old, I would still do it. It's, I'm young, I'm only 73, I will be very soon 74, but nevertheless, it's still young. And again, passion cannot be retired. You can retire from a function. You can retire from a job eventually, but not from your passion. Because once you have retired from your passion, what is left? Is left what? Just time to die. <laughs> so believe me, the passion will never be retired. So coming back to the building, now so far it's still empty, but something that seems very interesting and important uh, that we need to kind of stress out, I would say, is that you, you will be working like it used to be with the notion of établisseur. I mean, basically you have space here. It is here. 100% yeah. établisseur. And, uh, but you're not going to manufacture anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's mainly, I mean, I mean, the brain power can be here in terms of technical development, bureau d'études mm -hmm. and so forth, but then it's assembly and uh, uh, finishing that will be uh, focused in the, in the, in the... Yes, because that was, that, that has been the success of the Swiss watchmaking art till the middle of the 20th century. Uh, you had établisseur uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's it. And even big brands today that are today, I would say 90% manufacture, they used to be in the beginning of last century or till the middle of the 50s, they have been établisseur. And we just come back to what was normal in the past. And établisseur has a few advantages. The advantage is you have the diversity. If you have a manufacturer and you have your own dial maker, you have to buy the dials where? From your own dial maker. <laughs> When you are établisseur, you can choose and you can take the best. The best in, in making hands, the best in making crowns, the best in making dials, the best in making uh, uh, springs for the movement, etc. You can, you have the choice. Even within those brands, like even with, within each these uh, savoir-faire, you have the best uh, stone dial maker, you have the best guilloche dial maker, you can even within one specificity of watch, cases, hands, dials, bracelets, you can go to the best for different reasons. So it also has the opportunity that we can learn different savoir-faire from people that really master it. Well, I'm very happy to hear this because, I mean, we've been defending the, the, this network of suppliers since yes. almost ever on Watches TV. And uh, to know that, uh, again, through your endeavor is going to put a bit more spotlight on these people that deserve it, obviously uh, ma ma makes me happy. Which means that, are you going to be also transparent with whom you're working with? Absolutely. We will, we will mention if the supplier has no objection. We met the supplier uh, yesterday. He said, you know, I prefer you don't mention me. I said, no problem. <laughs> That's, I don't have to mention that you have done the dial or the... Uh, so it, it will depend first on the supplier, but our goal is clearly to promote our suppliers because it's our suppliers who make the music finally. It's like in an orchestra. 
we are just saying, okay, one, two, three, stop. And then the guys are starting the music. <laughs> it's not the, the, the director. He just gave the start. Okay, he controls a little bit, but nevertheless. So um, we will, I, I talked today with Marin. We even said we have to make a little uh, leaflet of every supplier. If there have been 75 or 60 different suppliers, even the small ones, they all deserve a little leaflet that we publish, that we send to our customers to say here, these, these are the guys to whom we have to be thankful that they did your watch. The fingers of, of uh, uh, les, 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 mains, les mains du miracle, the fingers of the miracle. And also, it's you, it's, it's you really have to believe also in the fact that to grow, to become better, uh, to develop, you must also grow and develop the people around you. So by sh having this transparency um, with our with the public of who makes what and our suppliers, it can also help our suppliers to grow. Hence, we will grow with them. Uh, so it's all about the journey and the way that we can together as an ecosystem. Uh, r become better at what we do. Can you explain uh, what floor we're on? Uh, so here we're on the complications floor, uh, where we'll have our high, our grand complications and other very high-end watchmaking pieces. Um, it was important for us to have a dedicated space for our watchmakers uh, who will be working on these pieces because they need a lot of stillness, privacy, they need to be calm, they need to have space. Uh, and they need to be able to work without too much back yeah, and forth. No passage and so forth. Exactly. Yeah, they can be really so secluded, but I mean, in their, in their, of, in their, yeah, in their own space. In their, yeah. in their privacy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so for us here, it's really important that we have uh, rooms where it's one to two watchmakers at most uh -huh. um, and really give them the freedom, the air, the space uh, to put their creativity and their mastery at work. Uh, especially on pieces like miniature repeaters where you need to fine tune the sound and everything they need to be really focused and mm -hmm. and as you it. mentioned is the same watchmaker that will assemble from a to z exactly. his pieces and decorate, and, uh, them. And decorate them also exactly I mean, like the traditional way of doing yeah. things yeah yeah the high end, high end way and here you have this um this big space where we felt it was the best place to have more dedicated to the i, I was going to say lesser complicated pieces yeah but it's not really the case because we'll we'll give the same attention to detail course, yeah. um, it's more for technical reasons that we have this separation so here you'll have more more watchmakers they'll be able to you know if somebody has specifically qualified for a certain decoration somebody needs help or whatever it, it will be kind of a hub where they can exchange learn from each other and also where there's a m more sense of a not a chain but yeah they're together here making the magic happen. So the, the, the watchmakers on the top, I mean, obviously they will also work on some, uh, they will do the really end finishing on some mm -hmm. of the components, but some of these components, for instance, could have been kind of prepared, if I can say so, by people here. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So meaning that this is probably- Or our suppliers. Or suppliers, of course, yeah. So this is probably where you're gonna have the most of your staff uh, exactly. here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, probably, uh, depending on how we organize some of the final operations, for instance, uh, by putting the watches in the cases, maybe the watchmakers uh, of the high-end floor, let's yeah. say, uh, will not necessarily do that. So maybe it will happen okay. here. Uh, as you know, it's to build a watch it's, uh, divided into many different operations where we uh, make the movement, assemble the movement, case it, then uncase it, then reassemble it, then quality control and everything. So depending on how we organize, there'll be also um, actually a rotation between who works upstairs and downstairs because we want all our watchmakers to be qualified on yeah. every type of pieces. Well, it's motivating for them also. Exactly. Yeah, so, you know, if you're here downstairs, yeah. uh, maybe you'll say, ah, can't wait next month for me to be upstairs. And uh -huh. then when you're upstairs, you're, of course. you're like, concentrated in your work. So it's also an aspect of rotation and having, there, there's no, um, it's not better upstairs yeah. or downstairs. No, 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 no. It's just a different level of, of uh, complexity of course. and of course. Yeah. responsibility and reward. Right. 
And now to finish a little bit this interview, more kind of a, on a personal level, how is it for you guys to work together on a daily Electric. basis? <laughs> <laughs> Electricity is in the air. But our love is in the air. Love is, is also electricity. I, I, you know, I, I really, uh, if I touch him, uh, <laughs> I really, I really believe that. I think something that's true is that, as we're so passionate and we put so much energy and love into this project, um, we have every imaginable scenario, and it can, ha and every of them can happen in a day. So we can start off the morning by being best friends, which is the case most mornings, and by nighttime we. <laughs> He's deleted my contact. Uh, I don't know his name anymore, and then it starts again the next day. But um, it's it's actually a very interesting learning curve, also because it's interesting to meet a parent through another scope, which is scope of this professional life. It's not always easy, but it's super interesting, and it really develops our relationship uh, at work and at home. And you must, you must, you know it, uh, and it's important maybe that I mention it. <coughs> I am. I have been 50 years in the business. Mm. He's starting, so it means we are absolutely complementary. If he would have been 50 years in the business, and I would have been 50 years in the business, then I'm not so sure we would find the way to collaborate, because everybody has his own ideas. Here, he is flexible. I am still flexible because I think I still have to learn. I have to learn from the young people. I would be, it would be more difficult for me to learn from somebody who is my age. But from the young people, we, they have their own vision. He has different visions on the watch, on my collection, on life, on the, you know, and that is important. And I'm ready to listen and I'm ready to learn. Once you're ready to listen and once you are ready to learn, then you can collaborate. But there is no collaboration if you cannot share. And and this being said, it's really a privilege that my father is the way he is because it's also, um, hopefully, maybe one day I'll be able to uh, have a more senior position in, in, in this project one or another. One day you will be the boss. And it, it also teaches me the way he is because obviously the, the fact that uh, with such a big experience in the watch industry, uh, his age, his knowledge, it could be very easy for him to just say, listen, I know what I'm talking about. You guys go clean the toilets, I'll handle everything. But he's really the complete opposite, uh, always listening. And even in the way we hire people or the way we recruit, we, we're always looking at having a sweet spot between experience, but a touch of creativity and thinking out the box, which uh, is super important. So I'm really privileged to have a boss like that. <laughs> I mean, thank you so much for hosting us uh, here today. It's Welcome. really it's interesting a pleasure to, to have see, you. Uh, I mean, these spaces empty. I think it's quite uh, funny to see this and uh, to see the evolution Definitely. and probably see, I mean, maybe some discrepancies in the future between what was planned and what exactly. actually happened. I hope so, because uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the only indicator that we're doing something right is that exactly. things change yeah. and we have to, we have new challenges and we realize, oh, we weren't so, uh, so accurate or so right, or we thought too small or we thought too big. Um, it's something I'm learning with my father is to never be too sure, not have too much conviction. Yeah and just kind of go with the flow as well. It's important. And um, yeah, it's rare that you get to see a, a brand really from scratch. Something completely raw. So next time, machines, workbenches. No benches. machines. No uh, machines. Still, if you want to do some finishing, you still have to be a few machines. Right? Light. Light. Okay. No, I'm Can saying this for, for, the, for insurance purposes, because if they hear us say we have machines, they'll run and increase our policy. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Small machines. Small machines, okay. <laughs> Vacuum cleaners and uh, <laughs> hair dryers, and that's it. Coffee, Nespresso. Coffee machine, also. That's <laughs> it. So, uh, I mean, obviously, we'll have more furniture and we'll have people, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, the team is going to grow uh, rapidly, or do you. Uh... So, right now, well, obviously, they're not here because yeah. the activity hasn't started. Yeah. So, each department kind of arrives at a different time. Um, for the moment, we have four. So, uh, my father and myself. Uh, Jessica, our business director, and uh, our constructor, which we cannot uh, mention yet. Yet, okay. But uh, so we've, those are the people that are in the short term arriving already here. And then from start of 2023, we'll have a whole team of uh, watchmakers uh, and other 
different administrative world. Excellent. Well, congrats and can't wait Thank to you. follow this uh, on the long run. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first episode and can't wait to carry on and discover together a bit more concretely what they are cooking. Thanks for watching. See you real soon and viva watchmaking.